to whomever much is given of him will much be required and to whom much was entrusted of him more will be asked karmanya vadhikaraste mahabaleshu kadachana my guest today uses these quotes often another one of his favorites is from alvin toffler the famous author and futurologist who had said the illiterate of the future are not those who can't read or write but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn Without further ado let me introduce the man of the hour the man of words and action Dr Ravi Kohli Doctor welcome to ITV Gold studio hey, Good afternoon ITV Gold and uh, it's my pleasure and an honor to be here to interact with you and your audience uh, to uh, give the message of api to all the general public as well as all the physician members who might be listening and watching us yes thank we you are, for this yes we are so looking forward to it so my first question dr ravi kohli you are a board certified psychiatrist with specializations in addiction geriatrics and forensic psychiatry serving as the psychiatric medical director of southwestern pennsylvania human services you certainly a man who wears a lot of hats how challenging is it to wear one more hat and that too as the 41st president of the american association of physicians of indian origin rp and you have quoted my speech from the inauguration and i also want to reiterate the story i told we all have more strength than we realize like anuman realized his strength in uh, when he was reminded mm -hmm. all these challenges actually make us stronger and uh, find the potential and aspiration that we all can fulfill mm -hmm. so all these uh, opportunities are opportunities to serve opportunities to learn opportunities to connect which mm -hmm. are which i believe are the most important aspects of humanity being connected being able to serve mm -hmm. and share our bounty with others less fortunate than others of course so i feel blessed to be able to do this wonderful tell us how your association with rp and leadership responsibilities started I started my career at OPI through my local chapter called Tri-State Association mm -hmm. of uh, Physicians of Indian Origin in Pittsburgh, which is a one of the older chapter that has been around for many years. And we have some illustrious leaders coming from our area uh, for OPI. For mm -hmm. example, Dr. Sarjit Singh was one of the president of OPI, was from our area, mm -hmm. and many board of trustee chairs have been part of OPI, including Dr. Madhu Agarwal, Krishna Agarwal, Dr. Radhu Agarwal, and many charitable foundation chairs also were mm. originated from RP, including Dr. Pandey, mm. Dr. Shukdev Sharma, Dr. Mm. Brahma Sharma, and uh, mm. other people as well. So mm -hmm. I follow their illustrious uh, historical uh, connection with RP, and I feel blessed to have them as mm. my mentors and guides and friends in RP. Definitely a long journey. Yeah. Then I continued mm. my. Association of Apna Tapi, a local, local chapter, and then became the president of my college mm -hmm. alumni association called Rangaraya Medical College Alumni Association, mm -hmm. which represents about mm -hmm. close to 750 alumni in this country. Mm -hmm. And then I also became president of uh, AT and the USA Association of Telugu Medical Graduates, one of the powerful alumni group. Wow! And then became the regional director of AAPI, and many committee chairs and committee memberships. Mm -hmm. I took on. Later, I was elected as the secretary of API and then vice mm. president, president elect now, the wow. president. And wow. like again, to uh, quote the same quote I quoted in the past with great mm. power comes great responsibility. Mm. And it is for me to fulfill those mm. responsibilities I have taken. And uh, I have many friends and mentors and guides mm. to help of throughout course. my journey. Dr. Kohli, you made a statement. It is essential we as individuals, organizations and societies must reinvent and repurpose ourselves constantly and continuously to stay relevant and impactful. Please elaborate on that. Yes, that's a very good question and a very important question and mm -hmm. a very sometimes a sensitive question because mm -hmm. our uh, founding members and our senior leaders have a lot of passion for our API. Mm -hmm. and uh, they have invested so much of their time and energy to build the foundation of our api mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted to thrive and succeed and continue to do well and make ma many more heights and reach many more heights mm -hmm. but at the same time if we're stuck in a 
uh, same uh, uh, wheel of uh, action rather than reinventing some things, mm -hmm. but repeat the same cycle of actions. Mm -hmm. Because the new, new times, new eras bring new challenges, new roles and new opportunities. So we need to fulfill those. Mm -hmm. While we can learn from our past, we cannot rest on the laurels of the past. Very true. Well said, well said. API represents the interest of 120,000 physicians of Indian origin. It is the largest ethnic medical organization in the United States. How would you describe the interests of the Indian American physicians? What is the core mission of API? API's core mission is to represent the values of our Indian physician community as well as the advocate for uh, uh, patients' rights and equity issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of challenges in our system, mm -hmm. while we have the most advanced, most uh, um, cutting edge technologies available for all our members mm -hmm. of our society, it's not equally available for everybody. So we need to be advocate for the mm -hmm. less fortunate in our system, mm -hmm. while also improving the healthcare for everybody. So mm -hmm. that's one calling. And then also we need to make sure the opportunities for our students, our residents, and our fellows, our immigrants, as well as the senior physicians in every phase of healthcare, including mm -hmm. education opportunities, mm -hmm. leadership, pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. and policy making aspects, or we are well mm -hmm. represented in all those areas. Mm -hmm. So we don't, because we have so much to contribute, we have, mm -hmm. uh, we have the heritage of a great culture and history, and we have the knowledge of this cutting edge technology. We are very malleable, very flexible. We adapt, we learn, we thrive, and we want to contribute all our learnings and knowledge and mm -hmm. our abilities to connect mm -hmm. with more people and bring more people to the table. Serving one in every seven patients in the U.S., RP members care for millions of patients every day. Dr. Kohli, talk about the growing influence of physicians of Indian heritage in different fields and important positions across the nation. As you are well aware, APIs uh, are Indian physicians. Some of them are API members, including the mm -hmm. Dr. Vivek Murthy, the Surgeon General, is an illustrious member of our API, and uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Rahul Gupta, the drug czar, uh, is also an API member and a good friend of API. Mm -hmm. And we have leaders in policy making and advocacy positions. We have leaders in healthcare industry, insurance industry, pharma industry. Mm -hmm. And so many of us are well represented and well placed to make changes that are beneficial for the entire mm. population as well as globally. So we yes. have we have the the aura and the prestige for us to be able to be heard and, and responded. And uh, even recently I was invited to speak at the Pravasi Bharti Adivas oh. as a representative of API and I'm taking this opportunity to kind of convey our group's message and our, our membership's message to Mm -hmm. uh, of diaspora to the government of India, which are very open and receptive to positive uh, projects and programs and uh, ideas. And mm -hmm. I think we are at the threshold of an era in mm -hmm. India where the progress and projects will pros bring prosperity and health care to mm -hmm. uh, multiple multitudes of the population. I mm -hmm. think we're on the threshold of a big change mm -hmm. for betterment of India. Wonderful. You feel very strongly about mass shootings gun violence and misinformation affecting the health and safety of our nation. Talk about that. That's a very sensitive question, but I mm. think uh, as a physician, we have to address some sensitive issues. We should not shirk our responsibility mm -hmm. to be spokesperson for public health. And as we all know, the, the multiple mass shootings on a mm. continuous basis is a blot mm. on our, uh, our culture and our society. And we're all victims. We all have to pay a role in addressing it. Mm. Nobody, uh, nobody is asking for our gun rights to be removed or uh, dis discarded, but we need to protect our mm. gun rights as well as the human rights. Mm. Because a lot of times, uh, uh, many suicides occur from these gunshot wounds. Many half of the suicides that happen in this country are uh, by the gunshot wounds, especially mm. in the men. Mm. So we have to address those things. Yes. Sometimes we have to the red flag, flag mm. laws and all those, when somebody mm. has acutely mentally ill or acutely mentally disturbed, we need to be able to protect them as well as others mm. from that. And so then you that. also talk about the stigma and barriers affecting access to mental health treatments that need to be challenged and dismantled. Can these right. be integrated into the API forum so that 
Indian American communities are also educated and made aware of these issues and they don't dismiss it as a white supremacy or black lives problem. Right, it's a societal problem, uh, gun violence, and especially in the rural areas, a lot of gunshot deaths happen mm -hmm. from suicide and all these things. So it's not a problem confined to small groups, even though the press coverage and the media publicity might be only on some segment of this aspect. Mm -hmm. There's a broad aspect to it and it's a public health uh, crisis to some extent. Mm -hmm. And we should, uh, the physicians, play a significant role in researching and helping drafting and and some guidelines on how to manage these mass mm -hmm. availability of mass destructive weapons. Some of these weapons and some of these ammunition have no place in a civilized society that we need to call for, uh, call for uh, curbs on those kind of mass mm -hmm. killing, uh, uh, weapons of destruction in our society. Sure. And um, we need to give hope to the communities, who are especially ravaged by the economic uh, uh, turbulences, opiate mm -hmm. crisis and family, family disruption whether it's an inner city or rural communities in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. So we need to bring all of the uh, challenges to the forefront and address them in a comprehensive way. True. We cannot address one problem and then expect the other problems to solve itself. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. We need to be, be honest about it. We need to collaborate. We need to listen to other side. Everybody has some good ideas mm -hmm. and we can come up with a good solution. That's what makes America great. We come up mm -hmm. with good solution at the end. Yes. How does RP work with local chapters throughout the nation and function as one entity? That's a very good question, and that's a very relevant and timely question. We have about 120 plus chapters wow. representing wow. various local areas, hmm. including every state, almost every state. And hmm. also we have alumni chapters that come from different alumni colleges in India hmm. as well as here. And when we have the specialty chapters, so total we have close to 120 chapters. Mm. And for the time, for the for example, right now we're in the midst of a, a share the warmth blanket drive of 2022. Wow. We recruited about 30 chapters mm. to partner with us and distribute uh, warm blankets to the homeless and people in shelters mm -hmm. to give them comfort during this holiday season. Mm -hmm. So it's a big. Uh, a uh, successful event that we have planned and it's you know, unrolling very well. We have almost 30 chapters signed up wow. and we're ordering them and delivering them in this holiday mm -hmm. time. So that's one way we collaborate with local chapters. Mm -hmm. In the past year, mm -hmm. we also did blood donation drives and vaccination drives mm -hmm. and all those things through the chap local chapters mm -hmm. because everything is local. All politics, right. all service, all community work is local, right? right. So we can be the uh, kind of a uh, plant the seed and the, give the seed monies to um, some of these activities mm. and we connect and a lot of our local chapters are led by some amazingly talented and energetic mm. and seasoned leaders they are mm. all willing to come forward and join for a good cause mm. i have no uh, um, kind of problems in getting people to recruit it to our activities they wow. come join the great heart and great full mm pledged uh, activities. Wonderful. How does RP promote patient care, health care for all, including uninsured population, strengthen the bridges with other communities, organizations, and government bodies? Yeah, that's a policy uh, issue that we always propose and pr promote in our legislative meetings. For example, mm -hmm. last year we had many legislative sessions with LATTE with legislators mm -hmm. at every meeting where I was also a moderator for many of them. I advocated for some level of uh, care that is universal for all of us, while there may be some levels of extra extended mm -hmm. care or extra care for people who can afford it, but mm -hmm. some basic care should be a birth right and a human right. Mm -hmm. So that's one the personal uh, policies as well as organizational policies, all of this can be advocated for in a, mm -hmm. in a very congenial way. It doesn't have to be one against us. It's not a zero sum. Mm -hmm. We all can be winners. Yeah. A healthy community is going to be a productive community. If True. there's a sickness and disability, that's going to cost us money economically, right? Yeah. There's a free, I mean, illness is not going to discriminate. Illness is not going to have the society continue to prosper. So mm. we need to have all able-bodied people mm. physically and mentally and uh, occupationally be able to contribute and produce and make our society a better place mm. for the future generations, right? Very true. How do you bring the younger generation of doctors to join your organization? That's another very good question. That's a challenge. Most of our Indian uh, 
diaspora organizations, temples and organizations are struggling to find the right balance. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are fortunate to have some very young dynamic physicians being part of our leadership. Mm-hmm. We put them in all kinds of committees in the leadership role. We have a young physician section that is a kind of boarding, like a starting board for a lot of young physicians to mm-hmm. groom their leadership skills and take on leadership roles mm-hmm. in the trustees and, and uh, as well as executive committees. Mm. And uh, so a lot of local chapters are nowadays being led by younger physicians. So I see a big sea change in the next five to 10 years mm. and that they will be taking over entirely and will be just on the sidelines being a good mm. uh, watchful eyes on them to make sure that uh, um, we kind of, which have the checks and balances and, and a big picture view while a younger generation tend to have a lot of energy, a lot of passion to do things quickly. Mm. So we can um, balance those energy as well as experience oh, together. Of course, of course. Any closing thoughts or a message before we conclude this show? Yes, uh, we have um, great programs ahead of us. We have a global health summit in Vishakhapatnam being conducted from July 6 to, I'm sorry, January 6 to 8. And uh, more than close to 100 delegates from here are signing up. And we have local uh, doctors and medical students and uh, postgraduate students in India participating. And they are competing in research uh, poster presentations and medical jeopardy contests. And uh, we are inviting them free of cost for the medical students and a nominal fee for postgraduate student. Mm -hmm. And we're giving them prizes. And uh, we'll be uh, doing, we're we're also addressing mental health stigma and uh, suicide prevention in India, which is even worse than here. Suicide is a bigger problem in India than even, mm-hmm. even here. So we need to address that forthrightly and because of the cultural issues and uh, spirit, religious issues, sometimes we have more reluctance in our Indian population to seek help. And uh, so we need to kind of facilitate those cultural barriers to be ba- broken. In a, in a culturally sensitive way, we're not going to discount any of the uh, our values of spirituality and our traditional values of um, mindfulness, yoga, and community, and support, while also bringing the, the medical and the healthcare aspects of us, uh, mental health to be addressed in a comprehensive way. By attacking the stigma, by removing the stigma, by mm. uh, making the public aware, uh, aware of the advances in mental health and uh, opportunities to seek care. Mm. That's one thing. Uh, we're also promoting HPV vaccination back in India again, which will save a teenage girl from cancer, cervical cancer, which is 90% protective of the cancer. Those things we are doing. And last year, we started Adopt-A-Village program, basically where we were screening villages uh, for uh, some chronic diseases in each village, about 100 to 120 people. There are a lot of uh, generous supporters and uh, enthusiastic helpers, both here and in India. We're leveraging all our energies and our passions and our uh, feelings and sense of oneness to help each other and uh, to make a impact on healthcare both here and there of course so thank you so much for your time and talking to itv gold and all the best for your rp ventures it's my pleasure and again i want to thank you and uh, all the sure. the administration and the ownership of, and the, of itv gold who are dear to api and also the members and the audience of our itv gold who are a big fan big friends of api as well yes. to continue to support us yeah and reach out to us for any kind of related public health uh, issue that we can help them uh, educate or bring awareness to any aspects of their uh, needs. Thank you and uh, have a good day. Thank you.